Boom shakalaka, something huge is about to happen for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies between now and Thursday. Today's video, I am joined by senior market analyst from Token Metrics, Bill Noble. We're going to be going over exactly what is going on and how best to profit from it. You definitely want to stay tuned. Bill, welcome back to the channel. Always a pleasure to have you here. You're definitely a fan favorite. Today, we are talking about some exciting things in cryptocurrency. Word has it that tomorrow, the 8th, is going to be a pretty exciting day. Yes, ahead of the inflation number on Feb 10, uh, you know, some of my, some of my GAN work and some of the things I've read would indicate that you know, you're going to get one last dip off a negative news item. You know, I don't know what level the market stops at on the upside first, but you're going to get some kind of dip and that's last chance shopping. <clears throat> Our theme is February is going to give you one year's worth of gain in one month in crypto. Wow, that could be pretty exceptional. So, I mean, that's good news because I was going to ask you towards the end, what recommendations would you have for the people who panic sold the bottom? And I guess the news would be buy the dip on the, on the 10th. I mean, if you bought the top or sold the low or both, uh, you have something in common with the greatest traders of all time because they've all done that, right? So <clears throat> the market rallied the way it did because everyone was short and no one owned it. And I think in your head, you have to go with the, you know, so, you know, so what, now what mentality. So, so what's causing would happen with the market? Because we saw gigantic moves already and you're saying potentially a year's worth of gains in just February alone. Right. So it, it, it's the thought process has a couple parts. So after the Fed came out, we, we did a video called License to Speculate. We didn't get very far with it, but here's the, here's the gist. When the Fed raises interest rates, they raise the overnight lending rate between banks. That's the Fed funds rate. And then the rest of interest rates is determined by the bond market. So your car loan, your home mortgage, that gets figured out by the market. So, you know, with interest rates at zero and inflation at 7%, interest rates have to go up. Normally, they should be the same. So the Fed can raise the interbank lending rate. They can raise it once, three times, four times. But people miss something. The printing press is still on. They haven't even discussed printing less money. So after the Fed came out, I'm like, why is everybody bearish? Then, you know, you've got the Russia situation. I get it. That's a little scary. But, you know, realistically, all that guy is going to do, and who knows, he may do it during the Olympics like this week, is he may just roll into these provinces in Ukraine where all these people are passing away in this guerrilla war. They all speak Russian. So he's going to roll the tanks in, and then he's going to have all the women coming out, kissing the Russian soldiers on CNN, and that's it. It's not World War III. And then there's Europe, right? So they have a little bit of a pickle over there. Uh, you know, the central bank over there has bought literally all the government bonds, literally. So raising interest rates would hurt their bond portfolio. So the inflation-fighting strategy in Europe is to just ignore it. Oh, don't worry, it'll go back to 3%. So everybody in Europe is left to figure out how to hedge inflation on their own. That would be crypto. Everybody is afraid about Russia and markets climb the wall of worry. And as I said, the printing press is still on. So buy crypto, right? Everybody gets hedged like the Michael Saylors of the world, right? I'm sure his treasury was scared to death, right? Everybody bought put options, everybody got short, and then everybody had to cover it once. Everybody realized, gee, the printing press is still on. And the next thing you know, crypto is, oh, wait, wow, look at that. That's how that all worked over the last two days. Yeah, it's definitely been kind of a perfect storm over the past few days with everything going on. But it was a nail biter for quite a time because I, I do enjoy yes. looking at on-chain metrics. And so like all of the stuff there is saying, hey, this is the buy opportunity of a lifetime. And yet the price was continuing to go down and hash rate was going up 
and the price was going down and it was just like man this is a nail yeah. biter you know Look, I, was getting... I lost a lot of sleep <laughs> uh, i woke up every day i put my put my phone on my chest i'm like all right is it going to be down 10 percent? and i was like no it's not <sighs> thank god <laughs> Right. So, so I, 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 we had some good pieces. We had some good research on it. But, you know, if you sold the low, uh, you had company because the market scared you to death. And that's mm -hmm. usually the way it is at bottoms. The, mar the market never trades bad at a top and it never trades good at a bottom. Mm, good never. advice. So I'm curious about February because uh, I've looked at, Bitcoin historically, and historically, January and March are two of the worst months for Bitcoin. Mm. February is somewhat right. of a positive month for Bitcoin. So are we thinking this is kind of like a one month February pump before we have a bad March and then potentially good again, April, May, go away and all that stuff? Or what's what are we thinking? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's April, May, go far away. So <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the bottom line is when you have... Uh, big shifts in the market, you know, when some of this news that I talked about, you know, some of that stuff could go from negative to, you know, from, from okay in the short term to bad in the long term, right? So typically when you have these kind of, you know, downish markets, I mean, this happened in 2018, right? Bitcoin went from 20 to six and then back to 13. In percentage terms, those were huge moves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so in February, while, while fear was at its max, right, that's the upside game. I mean, there's still stuff out there, right? Like urine finance hasn't moved. Sushi hasn't moved. You know, uh, AVAX could go to 100. Everybody's forgotten about Solana, right? It, it, it's an NFT story. <clears throat> so I think it's in February, it's up. And then uh, I think in March and in May, you have to start watching out for items that are not on everybody's immediate worry list. You know, that could be, you know, like that Chinese real estate debacle with Evergrande kind of spread out. So if the Fed does hike rates in March, you know, that could be a little bit, you know, that, that could be a top. Plus, not to mention in crypto, I mean, you know, Bitcoin goes from 30, 30, 35,000 to 55, 65, or 75,000, then you got to take the money, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Especially in this, you know, the weird, the world is weird. Right? Yeah, so definitely. you get a year's worth of game. Yeah, definitely shocking times we're in now. Right. Um, so you, you had mentioned briefly uh, something about the GAN that, that you saw. And I know you do the charting on your Twitter profile at crypto underscore noble so everybody can go follow you there so what right. are you seeing going on with that okay well there's a you know I, I read research from other people right and you know gan works on both price and time right so that work allows you to say all right you know what are the important dates you know what dates matter uh the, the device is called the natural squares calculator, right? It, it, if I showed it to you, everybody would laugh. But I do work on the Twitter, on my Twitter with price and time. <clears throat> so February 8th is, is the period where, you know, you just have to keep your eye open for the dip. And then after that, you know, February should look good. Okay, good. So uh, with using token metrics, because... I mean, this has been picking right. out winner after winner after winner. Right now, right. I'm curious what your feeling is in terms of time frames to do that. Because I like to look at things on a, on a daily time frame, on a weekly time frame, on a monthly time frame. With the ratings there, what do you think is better now? Would it be better with a shorter time frame or would you be better off looking at the monthly stuff with a, a longer time frame to give you a, a better idea of long-term undervalued projects? I, I think I think you go with daily. I, I think that's the way to go. And here's why. A lot of times when you have our daily indices, when a coin shows up time after time, right, day after day, you know, that can be a signal of a trend. You know, if we're talking about making a ton of gains in, say, a three or four week period, you know, weekly might help, say, on QCoin, because we can break it down by exchange. 
So say the weekly Q coin might be good, uh, or you can do Coinbase, FTX, and Crypto.com daily. Like for example, uh, RAI picked up XRP. I mean, we, we've never really done anything bullish on XRP because of the judicial and regulatory issues. Now, this is not investment advice, you know, but it's interesting that the AI sees something in the price action there. Also, the AI has been doing pretty well on our ratings page. In other words, the indices you focus daily, but the ratings page, you know, some of the coins that they picked up, like Kyber, Telos, you know, they did really well. And I think every day that when you look at token metrics, especially as the market goes up, you know, the AI is a trend following system. So as the market goes up, you'll have a, a greater variety of coins that you can look at. So if you can get in and out of something without some hideous gas fee, you know, you might, you might get a big return over the next couple of, uh, couple of weeks because the market hasn't rallied all at once. Right. I mean, like first it was metaverse, then it was Bitcoin and ETH. Then it's gone back to metaverse. Phantom has started moving again. That's DeFi. So other DeFi pro, uh, platforms may start moving. So the market's moving in stages. And to sit there and say, I missed it is not the right. That's not the right trade. Mm. Yeah. So it's definitely good to use. Uh, and anyone who wants to, there is a discounted link down in the description. You can check out there. So aside from the overall market, um, what are you looking at now? Altcoins, NFTs, the next latest, greatest craze? What are we, what are we looking at? All right, good question. Two things. So with altcoins, if you look at total three, as in the number three on TradingView, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's total crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin and ETH, okay? That chart was bearish and has now turned bullish. So I actually think altcoins may be able to extend the rally into March. Like Bitcoin may stop March 1, but altcoins may continue, all right? Particularly with ETH. ETH could really surprise people. Now, the second narrative is going to be this NFT narrative. Now, unlike crypto, you know, equities are... I don't know. <laughs> They're a little bit overowned and over pumped up. So if there was a problem with equities with sell in May and go away, NFTs are going to hold their value. Matter of fact, NFTs were going up while the market was going down. Now, yeah, some of that speculative BS, but art and stocks are not correlated. That means when stocks go down, art doesn't necessarily lose its value. So if you're in the right NFT, okay, the NFT party may last longer than anyone thinks. Now, one thing our, our NFT analysts, uh, we have like an NFT newsletter that we just started where we rank based on mathematical metrics per token metrics of style. These guys found, I believe it's a Zuki Zen when it was trading at three ETH floor. Now it's at 10 ETH. And just, I'm looking at it as a leading indicator for the market because, again, it never went down when the market was going down. And I'm wondering if you become the board ape of Asia. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Right. In other words, nobody's asking what's the next board ape. Yeah, definitely okay. could be. Yeah, for sure. And it's a hot market. So when you're talking, I'm just curious, when you're talking about like March, sell in May, are we thinking not? towards the end of 2022 being like a massive blow off top or thinking it'll come sooner. Okay. I know I'm putting you on the well, spot. Good... You don't have to answer. No, no, you're not putting me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to, I have an answer. I don't, I don't know if everybody's going to like the answer. So yeah. I think if there's going to be a blow off top, honestly, it's going to happen now. Right. In other words, if it's going to go, you know, cause I mean, look, Two weeks ago, everyone was like, it's going to 30K or 20K. Now everyone's talking lengthening cycles, blow off top, up forever. I actually think Bitcoin, you know, I, I definitely think ETH can go for a couple of reasons. But if there's going to be a blow off top, you're going to see it near term. Hmm. I mean, last year, 100K was assumed. And I said, no. And everybody thought I was crazy. Now, who's talking about 100K? 
Who's talking about 80K Bitcoin? Nobody, right? That's why it could happen now. Now, as far as, you know, sell in Maine, go away, Rectember and Rocktober, what I think you want to do, non-investment advice is make your money now being long crypto. Then tuck yourself away into NFTs and stable coins. Let whatever is going to go on with everything from, you know, stock market, interest rates. Don't forget we have an election coming up in November. You know, last time we had an election, we had a lot of weird stuff happen. Uh, I, I say sell in May, go away, come back at Thanksgiving and buy everything. All Most right. likely at massively discounted prices. Yeah, that is a that is a very good strategy. Yeah, definitely. Because um, I'm curious, when what indicators will you be looking at to know that we've come to that blow off top type of thing? Like, what are you right. are you just looking at sentiment? Are you going to be looking at different charts? What, what how do you know when we've reached massive FOMO and it's time to go? All right. That, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, a lot of people use uh, fear, greed. Uh, I like to use distance from the 21 day moving average, right? So if a 21 day moving average is here and the market goes this way, right? Then that would be the cue to exit. Hmm. All right. Because, you know, again, the things that everyone was worried about, you know, they're not a problem now because everyone was worried about them. When they stop worrying, in other words, when you see crypto Twitter be like, oh, it's gone to 250K, don't worry about the Fed rate hike, they're never tightening. I and mean, when you hear that whole narrative reverse itself, then I, I think, I don't know, on charts, you can do things like, you know, linear regression bands, 14-day RSI, that's kind of a long-term RSI, right? So if ETH goes to 5K or some wild move happens, you know, if the 14-day RSI is at 80 and it's just, it's time ago, right? People mm -hmm. in crypto are used to these like three month moves. Like last year, it was three months. This year, it's five weeks mm. and whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, super fast. So it could happen in the blink of an eye. Absolutely. Uh, it, it could. And everyone's like, yeah, I'll wait for the dip. Like, you know, today, like when this video is coming out, I mean, you might see Bitcoin at 45 before there's that dip that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, God forbid, there is no dip. You know, if you're looking for a dip and there is no dip, forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it could just, it could just go. So yeah. bull markets like this can, you know, they, they're hard. Bull markets are just as hard as bear markets. People walking in this morning, looking at their screen going, oh my God, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, it's been, right, what it's, I... <laughs> it's one heck of a ride. Uh, hodling is not for the weak of heart. That's for, that's definitely for sure. Right. Yeah. So uh, I know we want to keep this short just because a lot of people have a lot of stuff to do. Anything else you want to share with us today? You know what? Stay with Crypto Love. Uh, subscribe to tokenmetrics.com. You know, we would love to have you. If now is the time to make money, you know, if you subscribed, you could make your whole annual subscription back and then some in, in four weeks, right? So, you know, now's the time to be long. Now's the time to be thinking on dips. And I can give you my opinion and you can go to the barbershop or talk to a guy in the diner. But, you know, getting an artificial intelligence second opinion on your crypto may be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. So there's a discounted link down in the description. Bill, thank you so much for joining us again. It's been an absolute pleasure and we'll see you next time. Later, Bill. All right. Bye.